welcome to my channel. My name is Brian Beebe and I teach high school math. And today we're talking about routines and procedures. So my disclaimer is that I'm sharing what I do and what works for me and for my students at my school. However, that does not mean that this is the only way, the best way, or even that it would work for you and your students at your school. So use your best judgment. The purpose of this video is just to share some ideas so that you have an idea to work from. As I'm sharing, if you realize that you do something different and it works for you, please share in the comments below so that other teachers can see your different ideas too. If I could go back in time and talk to my first year teacher self, this would be the advice that I would give myself if I could only choose one thing. It would be to plan for routines and procedures because coming into my first year teaching, I didn't really have a plan at all. I vividly remember being more concerned with setting up my classroom which is part of routines and procedures, but I didn't have an overall plan. Two years ago, I joined Angela Watson's 40 hour teacher workweek club. And one of the steps that we had to take was coming up with our routines and procedures and basically putting them on paper. Putting it on paper was actually super helpful for me because I remember them, but to sit down and film this video, I said, let me pull that up so that I have it in front of me so I don't forget anything. And here's what I actually forgot. I forgot how much there actually is. I think this is like three pages. So this document that I have, I can share it in the description box below and I will. I cannot, however, share like a blank copy for you to make your own because that would be a violation of the 40 hour teacher work week club terms of use. But essentially I outline a procedure, how it works in the classroom, how I teach it to students and when I teach it to students. So a lot of these are covered in the first few days of the class. So clearly there's a lot here and I'm not going to go through every single one, but I'm going to go through the ones that I think are the most important in my classroom and the ones that are probably the most universally used. But when you sit down to think about your routines and procedures that you want to plan for, it's anything that happens repeatedly in your classroom needs to have a routine or procedure attached to it. And if you have a clear vision of what it is that you want students to do and how you want them to do it, the better you're able to communicate that to your students and the more likely they are going to be successful in carrying out these routines and procedures. So for example, for daily routines, I have listed what students need to bring an entry routine, what to do about tardies, um, bell work, how to sharpen pencils, copying new homework assignments, turning in homework, what to do when you're unprepared, using cell phones in class, trash, moving around the room safely or quietly, how to behave during the pledge, um, bathroom procedures, snacks, and dismissal. So I know it sounds like a bit much, but that's how much detail I went into all the little things where students may not know how to act going from one class to another. One teacher may be fine with them getting up in the middle of class to throw away a piece of paper. Other teachers are gonna say, can you please save that until the end of class? It's up to you. And if you're able to determine what you want, again, your students will be better able to carry out successfully what you expect of them. So our first routine is the entry routine, which basically just explains what students should be doing when they come into class. So first and foremost, students should be acquiring calculators and any paperwork that they need. So the paperwork, I have a bin for every class. It's color coded, it has a label, and I put all of their classwork for the day in that bin. Students are to use this time to sharpen their pencils or get a pencil if they have to. This is the time that I encourage them to talk to me about any like personal issues, usually grades. So if they have a question about their grade, I want them to come to me before class actually begins because sometimes you'll have kids raise their hand in the middle of a lesson and say, why do I have a zero on this thing? It's like, that's not the time. So they need to be told those things. During this time when I was giving daily homework, that was when they should be copying down their next homework assignment and having their previous homework assignment out on their desk for me to grade. And once they had everything that they needed, that's when they were to be sitting in their seat and working on their do now. So I would also add to this, that's when they should get their interactive notebook caddy from the shelf that it's on. So to teach this, I do a demonstration. I walk into the classroom, show students where everything is and explain how we're gonna pick these things up, we're gonna grab them, take them to our desk. And this is something that I teach students the first and second days of school. So the first day of school, I have everything out on their desk for them, which would be like a syllabus, um, if they're doing an about me paper. So that's already there so they can sit down and start working. But starting with that second day, they are coming in and they're getting the paperwork that they need as they come in. 
And to help this be successful, I make sure that everything that they need is right by the door. So my door is very close to one of my walls, and then along that wall is everything that they would need. So our other routines that we don't have to go into too much detail about are if a student's tardy, I tell them verbally and then let them know how many more lates they can have before I have to write a referral. Bell work is part of their entry routine, so they're sitting down and once they're seated and they have everything, they're to start working on this assignment that's going to be on the smart board. For sharpening pencils, we want them to do that as they come in, but you know, things happen in the middle of class. And the expectation is that they will just get up from their seat, sharpen the pencil, and either use the silent sharpener or the electric one, but they can only use the electric one if I'm not talking. They're really good about it though. They will stand there and wait until I'm done. We go over what to do when students are unprepared for class, where to find pencils, papers, etc. Usually it's just pencils that they need. For asking to use the bathroom, I had a hand signal procedure that I love because it's silent and I forget what different things were. But let's say I had like put two fingers up to use the bathroom. Maybe I went with three because there's like number one, number two and it could get inappropriate. So I was maybe like three fingers went to go to the bathroom and students would raise their hand with their fingers extended. So that way I knew that they weren't trying to ask or answer a question. I knew that they just wanted to use the bathroom and that way I could just kind of like nod at them. And the procedure was that they'd get up from their desk, grab the bathroom pass that I have hanging up by the door and then go. So I like that it was nice and simple. I know some teachers use sign language and they use the sign for bathroom, which is fantastic. I, I don't know sign language and I didn't look it up. I just stuck to the finger thing. The problem is that I didn't actually stick to the whole finger thing. My flaw is that I am inconsistent and I kind of forget to do these things. And then honestly, sometimes I feel silly. So I just need to get over it because it works. So I shouldn't feel silly about it and be consistent and enforce students asking me to use the bathroom this way. It's just another one of those things that's difficult because I'm teaching one class that my students have all day and I'm only one teacher. So when they go to a different teacher's classroom, they probably have a different procedure for asking to go to the bathroom. So it's not always memorable to use a hand signal to ask to go to the bathroom, even though I have a sign for it. The other major routine that we should spend some time talking about is dismissal. And I really need to work on this procedure and fine tune it because I'm not happy with how it is right now. But essentially, I try to stop class one to two minutes before the bell is going to ring because I'm doing interactive notebooks in most of my classes. So that means my students have out scissors and glue and highlighters. Essentially, what they have to do at the end of class is glue their notes into their notebook because if you glue before you take notes, the paper's wet and it doesn't work so well. So I have them glue at the end of class, but they need a little bit of time to do that. So I try to stop class early so they have time to just put everything in their notebook, close their notebook. They have to put their notebooks away. I have a spot for them to do that. They need to put away calculators. They need to put away supplies. They need to put back their notebook bins. So I give them some time to do that. Here's the problem though. Once they put everything away, they're already up and out of their seats. So the next natural step to leaving the classroom is to go through the door. However, we're waiting for the bell. So students end up standing in my doorway waiting for the bell and this I cannot stand. First of all, this is when my property ends up getting destroyed, whether it's what I wrote on the board for the day and there's finger swipes through it or just a poster I have up is suddenly moved and just little things like that because they can't keep their hands to themselves. The other problem aside from it being a fire hazard is I'm only five foot two. So if all of my students are standing up, I cannot see everyone. And that's just one of my big concerns is I always want to be able to see all of my students just so I can account for them and make sure everyone is safe. When students are standing up, they can easily conceal each other and then I don't know if something's happening. I'm actually a big stickler for them being seated. It drives me nuts when they're all up and walking around unless we're doing some kind of activity that requires it. So let me amend that statement. It drives me nuts when they're up and walking around aimlessly. The next set of routines are around instruction and classwork. So in this category, I have getting students' attention, students getting my attention, participating in a class discussion, where to find classwork assignments, turning in papers, passing out papers, working with partners and groups, keeping their notebooks, and behaving for subs. So the rest of these are kind of self-explanatory and really open to whatever you would want to do as a teacher. So when students want my attention, I want them to raise their hands, but oftentimes when they're in a place where they need my attention, it doesn't always make sense for them to raise their hands. So sometimes they just 
will come up to me and say something or if I'm right by them, they'll say my name. So I'm fine with that being the way it is and not having like a totally concrete procedure because there's a lot of different variables there. A big one for me is finding absent work. So I have a bulletin board set up and I've stapled folders to the bulletin board and they're labeled by class period. So students that have been absent, they go to their folder. There's all the papers that they missed from the day stapled together with a little cover sheet that's like a third of a piece of paper with their name on it, the date, what they missed, what they need to turn in and if they're missing any assessments. The only problem with this routine is that it needs to be repeatedly retaught throughout the year because you will have your students that are just frequently absent and they know all about where to get their work. Then you'll have the students that are absent one time for the entire year and they're not completely aware of this routine because they don't have to engage in it as frequently. When it comes to students turning in papers or me passing out papers, I have my students seated in table groups so I will collect from the table and I will pass out to the table. The next section in my planner is emergencies, which is kind of self-explanatory and we just follow the rules that our school has set. My last section is classroom, community, and culture, and this is where I want to change things up. So under this category, I have behavior management system, which is simply if students are misbehaving in some sort of way, I give them a warning. If they repeat the behavior, they get a small consequence, which would be like if they're talking to someone too much, we move the seat. I may have to call home to a parent. I just like to keep it something small and sensible, something that makes sense for whatever is going on. And then if they need anything beyond that small consequence, that's when we start talking about referrals because we just kind of jump there. We don't assign students to detention. Students get to detention after meeting with the principal. And that's just how our school system works. So that's really the only options that I have but the small consequences is where I have a wide variety of options. Maybe I need a conference with a student, etc. Usually a small consequences is all I really have to worry about. And of course there's the times when students basically engage in some kind of more extreme behavior where I have to write a referral right away because of a safety issue or something. In this category I also have earning homework passes which I don't do anymore since I switched to weekly homework. Um, I wanted to do a three before me rule and maybe I will institute that this year. And then for the last one, when I'm talking to someone, I just want my students to silently wave at me so that I know that they need me, but to wait for me to finish up with that person, unless there's an emergency. So that's what I have written on paper right now. What I feel is missing is like a test and quiz procedure. And essentially our procedure right now is that I have privacy dividers since my students are sitting at tables and we put two to a table diagonally from each other. Um, students are to have their cell phones in a pocket thing that I have, basically like um, one of those over the door shoe organizers. Students can put their phones in there so that I don't have to question anything if something funny happens and that's all I can think about at the moment, but I would definitely add that to this. And, I, and like I said, I want to improve my classroom culture procedures. So that's something that I'll be working on over the summer. So with all that being said, what are the routines and procedures that are essential for your classroom? And do you have any that you do differently from what I do? Please leave your feedback in the comments below so that other teachers can get other ideas that are not just mine. Because my way is certainly not the only way. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.